Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, I want to talk about opposition to the church from within the church. And I'm still kind of like thinking about the last video that I did about the Mormon Transhumanist Association and just like really baffled, not really baffled, but just like, you know, thinking about these people that people that are inside the church that seem to have issues or problems with the church or that think that they know better, you know, uh, this, this is like not a new phenomenon to me <clears throat> my whole life. I have always seen people, uh, struggle with the church at the local level, you know, people in the ward, for example, from time to time throughout the course of my life. Um, from the very beginning when I was a kid, I remember people having issues with the church. Um, and then, uh, you know, seeing it in sometimes in the news, people that have fallen away from the church. I've done videos about celebrities that at first were really celebrated because this is a popular LDS singer or a popular LDS band, you know, and whatever. And then they end up falling away from the church. Um, of course, there's the well-known phenomenon of people that fall away from the church and then become very, very anti-church, right? But I'm focusing mostly just on people inside the church, and it's it's nothing new. But once I became uh, a YouTuber, uh, it's like I've seen so much more of it. Uh, the reason why is because a lot of you guys tell me about it in the comments. You know, there's other people on YouTube that do their own thing, and uh, some to be some seem to be pretty hostile toward the church or the leaders of the church or have different issues. You know, and so I was just thinking about you know, the broad spectrum of people that are in the church, but seem to be against the church. And there's a spectrum. On the lower end, you have people like, I remember one time watching a, a YouTuber that essentially, uh, everything that they did seemed to be pretty good, except for there was one issue that they really struggled with. And they would essentially just go flat out against what the church standards were and then publish that uh, in their YouTube videos, put it on their Instagram. And it was just like, what, what are you doing? You know? And uh, like I said, everything else seemed to be pretty good. What that person was talking about. Um, so, you know, you do have a group again, this is on the like less severe end of the spectrum, a group that, you know, in their personal life, they have like maybe an issue with one of the principles of the gospel, whether it's uh, the word of wisdom or whether it's modesty or whether it's, you know, there's any number of things, you know, just like one or two things that uh, you have a hard time overcoming that is taught by the church. And that's understandable. I'm, In fact, I'm sure most people have struggled with that at one point or another, you know, because we all have our natural man and it, it's a pretty rough battle fighting with the natural man sometimes. And uh, when the natural man really, really, really wants something, then if you give in, then you may take sides with the natural man and then be like, why is the church telling me that I can't do this or that this isn't good or whatever. So you have that into the spectrum. Um, but then it gets a little bit more serious the further you, you go this way or that way, whatever, where, you have people that seem like there's uh, deeper issues going on. And that could be any number of things, you know. It might be because you were offended at church, for example. And there are those that leave the church because they're offended. But there's going to be a portion of those that stay in the church after they're offended. You know, they're not going to go down. They're going to, like, stick with it, even though at this point they're pretty much disgruntled. Whether that be because of some other member in the church, maybe a leader, a bishop, stake president, or an apostle, the prophet, whoever. So they get upset. But they stay in the church uh, for whatever reason, maybe for revenge, maybe it's part of their culture, but they just kind of sit back and they uh, are just always devil's advocate, literally, uh, against whatever uh, is being taught in church. You know, so... You do have like that middle ground of people that uh, are essentially tares, really. Um, and I want to be careful because like every person's situation is uh, different, obviously. Um, 
But then uh, you go even further than that and, you know, you can get even more extreme where you intentionally, you're now like full on against the church or you're intent on like seeing the church destroyed or you want to affect change in the church to make it more like the world or whatever your, your philosophy is. And, uh, and in that case, you have really bad actors that know exactly what they're doing. Uh, they may not be so much in the middle ground where it's like, well, I'm upset and I'm going to make it known, but you know, I, I'm still going to do it or I'm still a member of the church. You know, you can go beyond that and just be full on against the church, but still in the church. And I can't say anything about the, the Mormon transhumanist uh, association. I, I have no idea how it started. I don't know if it had outside help. Like maybe someone from the outside is like, Hey, you guys, you, you kind of agree with us, right? On transhumanism. Why don't you start a community for your church? You know, call it the Mormon transhumanist association. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if there were individuals outside, outside of the church. I'm talking about mortals, not Satan. Of course, Satan would have a hand in it, but I don't know, you know, and even if within that group, there's probably a spectrum of people, some that are probably more genuine and just confused about things, others that know exactly what they're doing, and they're uh, essentially in open rebellion against the church. So, because again, you know, <laughs> the idea of resurrection is very, very simple. You know, it's probably something that you don't even need our church to understand, like if you are like a convert. You know, even if you're not even Christian, uh, it, it seems like it's generally well known, even outside of Christianity, what Christianity is about and that Christ is someone that resurrects. And, and it's like as simple as that. But if you are a member of the church, it's something that's taught in primary. If you listen in general conference, it's talked about over and over and over again. And um, so much so that I, I remember one time in high school, I think I've maybe told the story once or twice, but I had a friend that uh, by this point we were just out of high school. We had just graduated and we were having a discussion about uh, general conference. We were both like going to the singles ward at this time and uh, we were hanging out and he was like, why don't they ever talk about anything new? You know, it's always the same thing. Why isn't there ever any new things? You know, and it's like because you don't even understand or there maybe not you, but there's people in this church that still don't even understand the basic things like resurrection. That resurrection comes as a result of Christ and the atonement. There's probably nothing spoken about more in the church than the atonement in the purpose of the atonement. So that's why I have a hard time. Uh, with this association claiming to be members of the church because it's so far off and so opposed to the most basic teachings of the church from the beginning up until now. So it's just, it's kind of uh, insane, really. Um, when it comes down to it, I think that the root cause of all of it, if there is one common denominator would be pride. It doesn't matter what level you're at. Pride in some form. So, for example, if you're on the on the lesser end of the spectrum, uh, you're you're having an issue with the word of wisdom, modesty. Uh, you know, maybe like your one thing is you support the LGBTQ community and want that to become expanded and more accepted and no longer can considered a sin. Um. You know, again, it's it's a part of your natural man, most likely, that you're giving into, and uh, you think that you know better, or you want to justify it. You know, you want to impose your will, or how you see things, or your idealization on the church, in church doctrine. You're basically saying that you know better than God in what he has revealed, or that you know what God is going to reveal in the future, because I've heard that argument too. Well, eventually there are going to be gay ceilings. The church just hasn't caught up yet. And so you think that you see the pattern um, and therefore you're already ahead of the curve. You're already ahead of the brethren 
the Lord's chosen apostles and the prophet. And so you're really in the right. It's pride, you know, or it could just simply be something as simple as you want to wear immodest uh, outfits because you want to show off what you have, you know, you're in, and what is that all about? It's about showing off. It's getting attention from other people. You know, you were blessed maybe with, with greatness and you want the, what you feel is the due attention from other people. You know, uh, it may not be like to, I'm talking about women, of course, cause like guys don't really struggle so much with the modesty, but you may not want to like get with all these guys, but you, you know, you want to show off to the whole world, guys, women, everybody, you know, just how beautiful you are. Okay. And therefore you want to dress immodest. Um, there could be other reasons like comfort or whatever you like tank tops and it's just more comfortable, but you know, ultimately it comes down to pride, right? Um, and that, that goes all the way up to the very top, you know, some of the middle people, the ones that, and I, I, this isn't like a based off of a study or anything. I'm just kind of like, uh, thinking out loud, you know, the middle people, um, it's still pride. Most likely, you know, somebody offended you. Well, if you're humble, it's a lot less, uh, it's a lot less likely that you're going to get offended because you're going to be forgiving. You're going to realize, well, other people mess up. There, there are people that are mean, you know, and then, which doesn't make it any easier, but you let it go. You don't hold a grudge. You're not trying to, uh, have, uh, revenge essentially. Um, some people may feel entitled to uh higher up positions in the church you know maybe you've already served as whatever uh high up in the church and you think that you should be a general authority at this point like you should at least be a 70 because you're so spiritual and you have so much to share and so you should be uh with the brethren and giving your ideas because you have a lot to share and a lot that you can do to improve the church and so you get disgruntled and so instead of supporting the brethren, you uh, argue against them and question everything that they do. You know, you might be a woman that feels that, well, you're very spiritual. So you should have the same uh, priesthood that the men do. And not realizing the difference in priesthood among men and women in how the priesthood actually works. No, you want to have uh, those positions of what you perceive is power. Right. So pride, pride, that's what it comes down to. It's pride, you know, and then if you're at the very far end of the spectrum, it's still pride because you want to, again, you want to enforce your will or your vision on the church. You want to see it go away or you want to change it in a very fundamental way. And you know this and uh, deep down, it's because you think that you know better. Um, it's it's just, it's really sad. I think that that's probably the root cause of all um, opposition to the church within the church. Sometimes it's more severe. Sometimes it's something that you can work through over time. Well, I mean, you can work through it all. You You never get to a point where you can't work through it or that you can't uh, fix whatever the issue is, uh, most likely pride. Um, there is one thing that I wanted to share, and I love this. This is from uh, President Nelson's talk, the April 2021 General Conference, Christ is risen, faith in him will move mountains. And he said something in, in this that I think resonated with a lot of people. It's resonated with me, and it's uh, stuck in my mind. I, I couldn't forget this after I heard it. He said, um, well, actually, I should read maybe a little bit more up here. Okay, second, choose to believe in Jesus Christ. If you have doubts about God the Father and his beloved Son, or the validity of the restoration, or the veracity of Joseph Smith's divine calling as a prophet, and then stop. I would add here, or that President Nelson is the prophet, that he's guiding the church, 
correctly because Christ is working through him. He's not making his own decisions. It's Christ that's inspiring him and directing him. Continuing, choose to believe and stay faithful. Take your questions to the Lord. So you're having an issue with modesty. You think that you should be the next uh, 70 or in the presidency of the 70 or whatever in the church. Um, you think that the church is old and outdated and uh, it should be updated and we need to go ahead and enact ceilings for gay people and um, we need to do all these things. Stop. Stop all the thinking and leaning to your own understanding. And how about you consult or receive uh, answers from God whose church this is? How about instead of trying to be God, you listen to God? So take your questions to God, the Lord, Jesus Christ, and to other faithful sources. If you have a testimony of this church, okay, I'll put the camera back on me. If you have a testimony, that's your, that's your foundation. That's how you know that the church is true. Uh, all of us have a different story. Some are converts. Some grew up in the church like myself. But at some point, you, you reach a point, hopefully, where you really question if this really is real, that this really is the true church and that it is everything that it says it is. And then you go through some kind of experience and you receive answers through the Spirit. And then you're like, whoa, no, yeah, this really is right. I had that myself because I was, I was born into the church, but I struggled when I was in high school. And for a good year, uh, maybe a year and a half, I didn't believe in the church. I was like, nope, because I had stumbled across uh, anti-Mormon literature on the Internet while I was in class. After I had done all my assignments for that day, I was just surfing the Internet and came across that stuff. And it put doubts in my mind. So, but I'll tell you two things that I learned from that experience. One is that one of the big drivers for me to like go ahead and just like, okay, I'm done, was my natural appetites from the, of the natural man. So I think that you would do well if you're struggling to examine, are there things that you're wanting to do that the natural man would want to do? And is that the real reason why you're questioning the church? But the second thing that I learned is as I was actually concerned about truth, I received answers and I had my own spiritual experiences. I don't care to share them here, but I definitely received very strong answers. And so at that point, you are facing the question of, are you going to let your natural man and what your natural man wants to do? Are you going to let that override what you know is true? First of all, you have to make sure that you actually prayed to know and that you're actually trying to find out the truth. That's like the first thing. Then you'll receive, you'll have the two things. You'll have what has been revealed to you through the spirit and then you'll have your natural man desires that were already there. And then at that point, you decide. And if you go with the natural man uh, and you ignore the truth, well, that's just foolish. And you're in for a rough ride. You're in for a rough ride, whether in this life, which you, you will definitely be in this life, <clears throat> but even more so in the next life as you realize that you squandered your opportunity, your potential. You had the answer. The answer was given to you and you still chose uh, to go this other way. So, um, <clears throat> so if you, if you have gone through that experience and you have to like really ask yourself if you have, have you really sought to know that the church is true? Because if you have, that is your foundation, and all the rest of it follows. 
So, for example, if you know that the Book of Mormon is true, you know that the church is true. Or if you're of the mind of like these splinter groups and it's like, well, you know, the brethren or the leaders after Joseph Smith, they got it all wrong. They got it all wrong. We were supposed to keep doing polygamy or we were supposed to adopt this or that or or whatever. Well, that's where you, once again, just like you did for the church, the Book of Mormon, for Joseph Smith, whatever, you do the same thing. You go through the same process about the current prophet. Like, you ask, uh, is this still the true church or has it lost its way? And you will receive an answer. But let's continue reading what this says. Um. <clears throat> take your questions to the Lord and to other faithful sources. So authoritative sources instead of uh, people on YouTube or pamphlets or people that are actively trying to uh, get you away from the church. Go to sources that you know are true. And how do you know that they're true? You pray about it and you ponder it and you think about it and you test it. And then continuing, study with the desire to believe rather than the hope that you can find a flaw in the fabric of a prophet's life or a discrepancy in the scriptures. Why would you hope? Why would you hope that you can find a flaw? Well, I think that goes back to what I was saying. You have to examine what is your natural man wanting to do? Is your natural man wanting to fit in with the rest of the world? Is your natural man wanting to... Uh, go ahead and go against the word of wisdom and be like, oh, I'm going to go do wine testing, wine tasting and go have a nice experience. And, <laughs> uh, or, oh, I like to go to coffee shops and there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, da, da, da. or I want to drink beer because all my friends drink beer and it's so cool or whatever. <laughs> it, it sounds so childlike because it is. That's like the type of things that uh, you hear about when you're growing up in, in high school, you know, the... You have these kids that start doing things <clears throat> before the legal age. It's the same thing. So maybe you should examine what is that hope? Why are you hoping you can find a flaw? What what are you being prevented from doing? And why is that thing so important? <clears throat> is drinking beer important? No, it's not. Uh, drinking beer, I agree with prohibition. It's, it's, I feel like it's a tragedy that prohibition was overturned. How many people have died because of alcohol? People that have died in drunk driving accidents, people that have died drowning because they were out on a boat, on a lake, having a good time, they were drinking, they fell in the water and drowned. How many people have been abused because uh, alcohol, it increases your anger? You know, you always hear about in movies and everywhere like, oh, my father was a drunk and he always beat me. Alcohol is just flat out evil. And you're wanting to do it because you think that you can do it uh, within reasonable limits. And I don't know, maybe you can, but you don't know. If you're someone that's prone to alcoholism, you don't know it until you start doing it. And that is a really bad thing pair of dice to roll alcohol is horrible um modesty you know you're wanting to show off to the world why it's because of your pride it's because of your pride you're playing uh essentially the um the the game of competition you want to look better than others. You really want to shine. It's lifting yourself up. That's what it's doing. It's lifting yourself up. That's all that it does. There, there's no other benefit that comes from it. Uh, and all the while, by the way, people that are prone to, uh, especially men that are prone to thoughts that, that they don't really want to have, but are intrusive when they look at women, uh, you're only causing more problems in the world. And there's this uh, issue of like, well, I should be able to wear whatever I want because that's men's problem. No, we all work together to help each other. 
if I'm doing something that is affecting somebody else, it's making it hard for somebody else, I stop doing that thing. Otherwise, it's just prideful. It's it's digging your heels in and you're going to have it your way. And uh, it's their problem. Gosh. All right, next. So why? What is the motivation between for your hope that you can find a flaw? I think that will... Uh, do you the most service if you examine that and if you're truthful with yourself. And then here it is. This is the main phrase, the main thing that I wanted to share in this video. Stop increasing your doubts by rehearsing them with other doubters. Allow the Lord to lead you. And some people are trying to do it backwards. The way that they would read this talk, if they could change anything, is they would be like, allow you to lead the Lord on your journey of spiritual discovery. Look how much that changes when you swap those two, if you switch these two. Allow yourself to lead God on your journey of spiritual discovery. That is so awful and so horrible. In this... This is the key word, you. So you have to um, think about who are those people that you're listening to? What books are you reading? Uh, who, who in your personal life, your friends, you know, who are the ones that you're having conversations with? When you go on YouTube, who are the ones that you're listening to that are increasing your doubts about the church, about church uh, teachings and gospel and doctrine and so on and so forth. Do you really think that it's a good idea to listen to people that are criticizing the church? Like there's that Bushman guy. Someone in the comments said that, I can't even remember his his name. Gosh dang it. Sorry. I, I'm like not the best with names. Who is that? Let's see. LDS historian Bushman. Let's see. What is it? Rough stole rough stone rolling. Rough stone rolling. Richard Bushman. Isn't that's the guy, isn't it? Anyway, somebody said that. Uh, Richard Bushman, and I don't know this. I don't know. If you're if you're interested to find out more, then look into it. But <clears throat> this Richard Bushman, this person said, was the guy was one of the guys that is part of the transhuman the Mormon Transhumanist Association. I can't verify that at this time. Let me let me see if he has like let's see Richard Bushman. Yeah, historian. I'm going to his Wikipedia page. Let me just see if there's anything about transhumanism here. Nope, there's not. So I can't verify that, but if you're if you're interested in that, then that's something for you to maybe look into. Okay, so anyway, um, you know, these people that think that they know better, that are always giving their opinions about what the church should do, what the church should be, how the church is getting it wrong. Why isn't the church doing this? <clears throat> Why isn't the church doing that? How the, how could the church be supporting this? You guys, that's rehearsing your doubts with the doubters. Take that seriously, because you may not think that it erodes your testimony in the moment. But we all remember the the frog uh, analogy where you have a frog. If you put a frog immediately into boiling water, it's going to detect the, the heat and jump away. And it's not going to stay in the water. But if you have a frog in a warm thing of water and you slowly turn the heat up, the frog is going to die because it's not going to be able to detect that point where... Uh, it's reached dangerous levels. So be very, very, very skeptical, skeptical and just walk away. 
when there are people that are criticizing the brethren. Rely on your testimony in what you know is true. And instead of you thinking that you're so smart and so wise, instead of relying on yourself and your infinite wisdom, check in with Heavenly Father first. Pray and be sincere. Don't have the hope that of what you, of what you want God to tell you. You have to be completely neutral. You have to be completely concerned with the truth and not your idealization of what the church should be or what it should do. Otherwise, I don't think that you're going to get an answer. Maybe you will. I don't know. But you're probably going to have a harder time getting an answer if you're really wishing and hoping and you're not really open to an actual answer through the Spirit. We're, we're living in a time of um, great confusion. Uh, I, w- I would even say strong delusion, uh, both outside of the church and inside of the church. You know why? Because there's people inside of the church that are adopting ideas from outside of the church. People that want to get much more close with uh, the philosophies of men, whether they be the LGBTQ movement or whether they be socialism and communism or whether they be um, on the other side of the spectrum. They want to become more, um, you know, more conservative and more evangelical and they want to be more like the evangelicals and stuff like that. An apostate group, by the way, a group that they're good. There's a lot of good ones that are unfortunately uh, blinded by the craftiness of men, but it's probably not a, not a good idea to want to be blind yourself when we already have the light. They're the ones that need to come to us and learn from us because we have the restored church. The church that they think they are was lost. It was lost very shortly after Christ died and after the apostles died. Gone. It is back now. The entire Christian world needs to look to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints for the truth, because this is the only place to find it. So to be looking at other groups and wanting to be like them, that is completely inverted. That is completely backwards. And that's not to say that you can't learn uh, about those groups. I do that all the time with Judaism. They're the ones that were the original, um, well, okay, I don't know if I'll be careful how I say this. They're the ones that um, were, were like a really big splinter group uh, from what was supposed to happen. They, they split away from the true church and remained in their ways, looking for what they desired, what they thought should happen, leaning on their own understanding. Let me ask you this. When you look at the objects in your home, how many of those things do you think that you could make by yourself? And think about um, predicting the future. How many times are you good at predicting the future, whether it's calling a game or whether it's um, what time you think someone's going to show up or what you think the weather's going to be or whatever? How What is your track record with uh, guessing the future. And I already know it's bad because none of us are good at guessing the future. Um, in some ca- in some cases you can because things are just like really, really obvious, you know, like in sports or something, it's like, oh yeah, you know, you look at the past track record, but um, even with that, there are sometimes upsets and surprises. How many times Uh, For example, in science, have they said, oh, this will never happen. This is not possible. I've covered stories like that on my channel. In scientists, the people that have all the knowledge in the world are consistently wrong about what's possible all the time. You know, I I think it reminds me of this uh, story that Elon Musk once said where I can't remember what he was trying to do, but I think he was like him and a business partner. They were trying to um, 
go to the owners or the executives of of these telephone book companies and try to get that digitized and get it online. And um, they didn't want to do it. And he said at, at one of the meetings, the guy pulled out, you know, the big yellow pages and he's like, look at this. Do you think that this will ever be replaced? <laughs> Because they know so much. And, you, you know, maybe you can't blame them. It's like, yeah, how's this ever going to go away? But guess what? How many things have gone the way of the earth? You know, Circuit City, uh, Blockbuster, Hollywood Video, um, Fry's Electronics, uh, Kmart, Sears. Who would ever thought that Sears would fall so low? They, they, they still do exist. Um, but I think, let's see, store locator. Oh, there, there's somewhere. I looked it up one time. Let's go to the Wikipedia page. Oh, here we go. As of May, 2023, guess as of May, 2023, how many, uh, physical store locations do you think Sears has? 11. I, I don't know what it's like outside the United States. I don't know if there were ever Sears in other countries, but if you grew up in the United States, Sears was like one of the most powerful retailers that there ever was. Uh, that bit, the tallest building in Chicago was once called the Sears Tower. And I guarantee that if you went back to the 80s, you'd be like, it's never going to end. They're just going to get bigger and bigger. Now, they're almost literally nowhere to be seen. And I guarantee nobody, uh, hardly anybody, let's just say hardly anybody, would have guessed that. That someday Sears would be essentially wiped off the map. So, for us to think that we know how God's church should be run or how things should go is beyond prideful. It is beyond prideful. If, if I were to lean to my own understanding, I wouldn't be doing this channel. When I, when I received that prompting that one day as we were coming home from somewhere, it, I remember it pretty distinctly. It was nighttime. And the first video that I did, I went out to the chicken coop and I just did like a video videoing the chickens and just kind of like sharing some of my thoughts. I had the feeling that I should start a channel and I could have very easily just laughed at that and be like, nope, no, I'm not going to do that because I just, I don't like how my voice sounds. I don't think that I have the personality. I don't think that I have the ability to do it. Uh, there's just nothing here. There's nothing to share. But I went ahead and did it. It went against my conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom would have been like, yeah, no, just focus on graphic design. Just do that. That's already tried and true and tested and whatever. You guys, we don't know anything. Sometimes we think that we do. We don't. You don't know anything. And I'm talking about like compared to all of reality. Like what we know is like very minuscule compared to what there is to be known. So why wouldn't you consult with a being that created everything that does know everything? Maybe just maybe a being like that is able to do his own work and call the apostles and send them to earth at a certain time so that they will be called and, uh, you know, inspire those who are doing the calling Maybe it's actually God that's in control and it's God that knows the plan. And maybe we should stop criticizing his decisions when he calls a certain uh, person to a, a leadership position. And that doesn't mean that that person can't make mistakes because at the same time, that very same God gives that person agency, but it's not your job to try and fix things. That's up to those that have been delegated that authority. And ultimately, that comes from God. He is the one that makes those decisions, not you. So let's stop 
being doubters and complainers. Let, let's be watchers instead of complainers. Let's be watchers instead of doubters. That's what we should do. Watch what actually happens instead of trying to predict it, which it's fine to speculate about things, but when you get really rigid about it, that's really dumb because we are bad at predicting things. I have no idea how the rest of this year is going to go. I recently did a review about the last six months because we're at the halfway point of the year. I made the video on uh, the 30th of June. Uh, there's, there's, there's no way to know what's going to happen the rest of the, this year. Did, did you know that there was going to be a Chinese spy balloon that would go over the United States this year? Did you know that that was going to happen? Did you know that there were going to be three other objects that were going to be shot down by the Air Force? Um, did you know that there was going to be a deadly earthquake in <clears throat> in uh, Turkey that split a Mount of Olives into two? No, you didn't. Nobody did. Well, in the case of the Chinese balloon, the people actually launching the balloon would have known. But um, even they may not have known exactly how that was going to pan out. So let me just read this again. And uh, this is how I want to close. Go back here. This is from the prophet, uh, of whom you hopefully have a testimony, starting with the Book of Mormon, the Bible, Christ, Joseph Smith, the Restoration, and hopefully you've you've actually, with an open heart, prayed to know that Russell M. Nelson is the prophet of God on the earth today, the one mouthpiece of God. And he said, and remember the scripture in DNC that whether it's my words or the voice of my servants, it is the same. Stop increasing your doubts by rehearsing them with other doubters. Allow the Lord to lead you on your journey of spiritual discovery. So that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it. And I'll talk to you guys later.